if you need freezer meals for one person, make your own home TV dinners. You're gonna appreciate it when you go in your freezer and pull one out and just have dinner. You don't have to do all the work. There's some easy shortcuts we can take with these meals. Are your friends on? Let's go. I made three baked honey garlic chicken, four roasts with potatoes and a veggie medley, and then our favorite meatloaf with potatoes and corn. I started on these freezer meals actually last night. I put a roast in the slow cooker. You can use a chuck roast, rump roast, or even a pot roast. To my half cup of water, I'm adding a packet of ranch buttermilk dressing, a packet of zesty Italian dressing mix, and a packet of brown gravy mix. I have the container of it, so that equals three tablespoons. Mix that all together, pour it all over your roast, and cook on low for eight hours. So I'm cutting it to where I'll get some really tender pieces. Yummy, yummy. I added the beef right back into the slow cooker because now I want them to hang out in that gravy and absorb all that up. And then when I'm ready to plate this up, and pour it over into the trays. And this morning I peeled some potatoes, quartered them, and got them in the Instant Pot. This is filled with potatoes. We're gonna get a lot of servings, and if I end up having extra servings, I can make a shepherd's pie, throw it on top of that, or I can individually freeze portions of mashed potatoes. They work out great, you guys. So I am not worried if I ended up cooking way too many potatoes. I found these meal prep containers on Amazon. There's brands like Freshware and Igloo. I have a combination of both. A lot of the time you can get them in a 15 pack. They're stackable, which is nice. And what's also nice is that they're microwave and dishwasher safe, and they can hold 32 ounces. I also have the Ziploc brand and the Betty Crocker brand. I would say that the Betty Crocker brand and the Freshware and Igloo brand work the best. I'm getting some help today with bags of frozen vegetables. It makes putting these together so fast, so easy. You don't have to try to cook up the vegetables to a certain point and try to flash freeze them and all of that. Get some help with frozen veggies. These are the steam fresh kind. I mean, any frozen vegetable is gonna work because you already have the moisture with them being frozen. And when you go to reheat these, they're going to be covered and it's gonna create the steam and everything it needs for it to cook. If you wanna make this process even faster, you can use pre-cooked rice, like these packets. Just open them up, add them to your container and continue putting your mail in there. It'll freeze and reheat well. You can also use already freezed rice and I like to use already frozen cauliflower rice. Let's dish up our roast beef dinner. Then in one, you're gonna add your potatoes. And I like to make a little well with mine. Then I like to put a couple of pieces of butter right on to my potatoes. Salt and pepper your potatoes, and then add in your frozen veggies. And then I'm gonna pour down some of that gravy. That is gonna be good. Look at that. How easy is this? Snag your favorite seasoning, put it on top of your veggies, get the cover on, and you're good to go. Okay, one of the meals that I'm making is meatloaf. It's one of our go-to meals, and it's perfect for individual freezer meals. I need to get my oven preheated to 375 degrees. I need a cup of diced green peppers, and I need about the same for the onions. And then I'm gonna add two eggs to the ground beef, and two cans of petite diced tomatoes. And I lightly drained my tomatoes. And I'm probably gonna do around a half a teaspoon of salt and a black pepper. The recipe that I have online for you guys for the meatloaf, it has all the measurements, but honestly, I really just eyeball it. A cup of quick oats. And then I usually do a little more than half a cup of um, breadcrumbs. Now I'm gonna get in here. I'll be sharing with you very soon my mom and sister's meatloaf. It is so good. But this is our go-to meatloaf. It freezes well. Everybody's happy with the flavor. And anytime someone says, I really don't care for meatloaf or I haven't found one we really like, and I just don't, I'm not sure about it. I'm like, make this. All right, I'm gonna get this in my pan and then we'll form it into a loaf. This is gonna cook for an hour. Now you can make them quicker, like in 25 minutes if you cook them in a muffin tin. We love it that way, but to proportion it in my trays, it just does better if it's in a loaf and I could just cut it and it just, you get more. Okay, there's so much happening here. We've got yard work and a neighbor's yard over here. Boston's in our backyard doing yard work and people are just getting things done. And I'm getting things done 
getting ahead in the kitchen. So I am out of regular mustard. How is that possible? We always have mustard, we're out. So my topping takes ketchup, brown sugar, and mustard. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of Dijon mustard in, it'll be fine. It'll just be a stronger tangier taste. It's gonna be fine. For the topping, I need two thirds cup ketchup. Instead of two tablespoons of this mustard, I think I'm gonna do one because it is different than what we're used to. And then I need four tablespoons of brown sugar. Give this a good mix and get this on top. Okay, this is going in the oven, 375 for one hour. Mmm, mmm, that is going to be so good. So our frozen vegetable that we love to have with our meatloaf and potatoes is corn. Is it another starch? Yes. But this is how we love to have it. So this corn I actually cut right off the cob the fall of last year. I'm gonna cut slices. I just cut some of this off in my finger. A definitely a different tangy taste to the topping, but it's good. It's very good. And I'm giving this a generous helping of meatloaf. We don't mess around in my family when it comes to the meatloaf. Adding in the potatoes. I like to leave a little hole just so it can cook evenly. And then I add the butter. And then I'm gonna add my corn in. I'm also gonna put butter on that. Um, you can't see this, but in front of me right over there are two people like drooling over the food. JD, this is what we used to call TV dinner. Yeah. I'm gonna salt and pepper this. Last time we made these, they went quick, but it's so nice knowing that when you don't have time to cook, there is a hearty meal, dinner, lunch, ready for you. Okay, and then just put the cover on. Yum. Yes, that's a lot of meatloaf, but my family, we don't go. Don't go small on meatloaf. No, you gotta go big. It's just so yummy. And our last meal today is honey baked garlic chicken. I do have my own recipe, but I'm trying a new recipe that's calling for apple cider vinegar, so I'm completely intrigued. I'm starting with two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and now I'm adding them to my nine by 13 baking dish. I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. And next, let's make the yummy sauce. we will need a fourth cup of soy sauce, and then a fourth cup honey. We're gonna mince up six cloves of garlic, We'll also need two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, and one teaspoon of sesame oil. Okay, once I do that, I'm just gonna shake it up. Now pour the mixture over the chicken. This is gonna bake for 30 minutes, again in a 400 degree oven. Mmm, smells good. Okay, what I'm gonna do is take the chicken off and I'm gonna thicken this sauce. I have a tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of water. Give this a mix. Okay, I'm gonna mix this in. And I'm gonna add back in the chicken. I'm actually gonna put it down, face down, different than the other way. Then I put it in my pan. And it's gonna bake for another 15 to 20 minutes until the sauce has thickened a little bit and the chicken has reached 165 degrees. I'm gonna use my Betty Crocker containers for this meal. I'm gonna add in my frozen cauliflower rice. And I'm gonna make this a hearty meal for Derek. And I'm gonna add two of the chicken thighs. This recipe is so yummy. I had a bite of the chicken. It is so good with that apple cider vinegar. Then I'm gonna add in my frozen veggie medley. And of course, you gotta pour the sauce over the chicken. Mm -mm. I'm even gonna pour it over the vegetables. I'm gonna cover this up really tight and it is ready for the freezer. Oh, this makes both a great lunch and dinner. Another TV dinner we like to make from one of our favorite go-to meals is our Salisbury steak. It is the best Salisbury steak recipe we've ever had. When you wanna go heat one, take it out of the freezer, take the cover off, wrap it in saran wrap, and depending on what meal that you're making, it could take anywhere from three to five minutes. So any of the freezer meals that you have to cook up before, like a lot of casseroles, bake them up and turn them into TV dinners. Because with our crazy schedules, we're not always gonna be eating together. Sometimes it is easier just to have individual TV dinners ready for us. I have another video where I share with you how to make freezer kits. I'll meet you over there. Thanks for joining me today, bye.